Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us just take a moment and ask for God's love and mercy to touch our hearts and to heal us of our sin. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundation of the jail shook. All the doors flew open and all the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the, prisoner, the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself. We are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to every one in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your right hand saves me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. For you I have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. 
because of your kindness and your truth. You have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right hand saves me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your right hand saves me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I will send forth to you the Spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regards to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, again, is nearing the conclusion of that um, sharing of what is going to happen to him. But he also realizes there is going to be that heartache. All of us who loses, who loses a loved one has that heartache. No matter whether we know that this person has been sick for a while, or whether it is a situation in which, wow, you were surprised by the death of someone, there's always a feeling of loss, and that's due to love. We love that individual. We love a lot of uh, wonderful people in our lives, and the last thing we want to do is see them uh, leave the earth. But we also realize, as people of faith, that when they leave, as John's gospel had mentioned uh, several weeks ago, um, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back. He knew that he needed to go to the Father. He also knew that the Advocate was going to be bestowed upon his disciples. But he also realized there's going to be a sadness, uh, a sadness of loss of him personally, presence, physically not being with them. And I think that's true for all of us. We feel that loss. And uh, it takes time. It takes time to move on from a loss. And that's where we uh, have this grieving. So there is going to be grieving. Our hearts will be filled with a, a sense of grief. But then we come to a realization that life continues, and we continue, and the Advocate is with us, and we move on and doing uh, something new. Um, we meet new individuals, uh, and, and life continues. But for Jesus, I think it's this realism that he has with his disciples. And that realism is something that he has with us. 
he understands grief and he understands loss. So when we lose someone really near and dear to us, he understands that loss because he experienced it with his disciples. You see, Jesus being so connected to us understands so much. It's that we don't always feel that closeness of Jesus or we don't always feel connected to Jesus. And that is a difficulty that we go through. Sometimes we feel just so separated. We've lost someone dear to us and I'm not necessarily connecting and I don't know what's gonna happen with my future. And all of this creates this grief and this, this difficult time for us. But always be assured, whether it's the loss of a job, whether it's changing of a residence. You know, I, I look at some of my older members who come to that realization, I can't stay in this house any longer. I've got to move on. That too is a loss. But that moving on brings its own challenges for the individual, but it also brings newness, just like every loss does. So when you get to your new apartment or you get to your new living situation, you can meet new people. You discover that the worries that you had about the roof and about cutting the lawn and shoveling and all the rest, that dissipates. And now there's a sense of freedom and a, and a difference. All of this is part of being human and this notion of grief and loss. So be aware that we actually have different types of losses throughout our lives, but always be assured Jesus is with us and that advocate helps us face a future with hope. So as we gather today, let's pray for our own losses. If you have lost a very dear person in your life, and that you're feeling that grief, or maybe you have moved. You know, a home that you've been in for 35, maybe 45, 50 years. I, I know for some of my parishioners, and you know who I'm talking about, they've been in their homes for a long time, and that time to move can be very challenging. So I wanna pray for each of you, and sometimes the grief that you're going through with this loss, that the Lord will be close to you, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I also want to pray for an increase to religious vocations, to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to be mindful of those who are sick. I want to be mindful of all of those working with the sick, that they will be strengthened at this time, that they will also feel God's presence with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to pray for the reopening of our parishes. I know that in different states, some parishes and businesses are reopening. That during this time of hope and energy, that we will also recognize this newness and embrace a new way of being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us uh, just call to mind any of those prayers people who have asked for our prayers, people who need prayer at this time, that the Lord will be close to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, these are our prayers. Touch our hearts, heal us of grief during moments of loss, and help us to face a future with hope and great enthusiasm as we lift our prayers today and always. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread that we offer you, which earth is given and human hands have made. Let it become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine that we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. Let it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my offering and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed. The integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with the paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present here in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer and on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and giving his blessing, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Jesus. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking in this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion with together Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, with all the bishops, with the priests, the deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forth with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember Kirsten R. Shambo, who has fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They are in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And so we gather our hearts this day as we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to all of your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of spiritual peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, 
and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. And let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we turn to the Blessed Mother and we pray for her intercession as we pray together. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly to thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Our Lady of Chestahova, pray for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody.